Agaloc is finally back with a brand new full-length studio album entitled The Serpent and the Sphere, the fifth studio album. Let's see what this album's all about. I'm Chainsaw, and this is my review of The Serpent and the Sphere by Agaloc. I discovered the band a little over a year ago with the album The Mantle, which is personally my favorite album from them. And then I dived into some of their later releases, the EPs and all of that, to really get a grasp of what this band was because... When I discovered this band with, of course, The Mantle, like I said, it was definitely a different sound than what I was used to. I was used to hearing all these different varieties of metal genres and stuff like that, but Agaloc was a little bit different. They were taking some different styles of metal I wasn't really used to or taking styles of metal I've never really heard before and kind of blending them together into their own kind of sound. And so definitely when I heard about this brand new album, I definitely was wanting to check it out. And it's finally here, The Serpent and the Sphere, the fifth studio album. So they're five albums in, and they have a few EPs out here and there. And listening to this album and really thinking about their past work and really seeing where they're progressing four years after their last studio album, which was the fourth one. So it's been four year difference between studio albums that there's not really too much change in the sound, but what's really changing is the actual musical elements. Not too much to where you're going to question if this is Agaloc or not, because this album sounds a lot like their past releases, but you really get to t uh, see that the musical things that really works for them, and you see that in the actual studio albums, the things that worked for them in the past, they're really using those and really enhancing those parts and really kind of exploring what more they can do to really ex expand their whole entire sound and expand the idea of the band Agaloc. There are three musical moments within this album, musical short songs that are basically solely acoustic guitars, and these were written by someone that's outside of the band, and they were placed throughout the album, and it really added a different type of element. We've heard acoustic guitars and stuff like this before in Agaloc, and it is seen throughout this album, but to really give three spots on the album, these three short acoustic songs from someone outside of the band writing these acoustic songs and really throwing them into the mix that... It kind of changes up the album in a sense. It really gives an extra thing to really latch onto and to enjoy because there's so many things to enjoy about this album, but the fact is that the band allowed this person outside of the group to throw in these three small acoustic songs to kind of switch up the album to kind of add this more melodic and very peaceful vibe. It really helped out the album, in my personal opinion. It really enhanced this album, in a sense, because it was something else that I can also latch on to and enjoy besides the lyrical content, which is at its top-notch form. Yet yet again, the drumming, which I think is very powerful in this album, and it sounds very uh, big and mighty in sections. And the guitar playing, which throughout this entire album, acoustic guitar playing, you know, lead guitar playing, rhythm sections, the clean guitar sections are all just fantastic. And the bass work, which is phenomenal once again everything about this album just keeps getting better and better by the listen i keep listening to this album and expecting at some point to go okay well i got everything i i understand everything that this band is trying to give to the listener but i'm always finding something new something new within this track or this section within a song or maybe it's something that i wasn't really understanding like it was like an effect or something like that that i wasn't really getting at that moment but then i'll get it at a later time it's like it's basically you keep listening to this album you'll discover new things and you'll maybe hear something differently that you previously was hearing in a different way like oh Okay, now I understand that. Or, oh, I see it in this way now. And that's what I think is really powerful about Agalox music in general. Because that has an effect. Because when I first discovered The Mantle, and the same thing with The Serpent and the Sphere as I'm discovering now, that I'm, I was still discovering stuff months and months later after discovering The Mantle for the first time. So my theory is that I'm going to be discovering and basically rehearing things in a different way months and months down the road after this review's done with The Serpent in the Sphere and I'm done talking about it because that's what I've noticed with Agalox music. There's always something new and always something to really grab onto. And so let me go through some things that I really, uh, some of the songs that I think that really stand out now, of course. Some of them I'll probably butcher, so I'll probably say the track number. I may try to pronounce them, but the track listing in the description is definitely the best place to know because I don't want to butcher song names and band names. I try my best not to, but it does happen, unfortunately. But I'm trying my best here, and so 
Anyways, track number one, which I think is a great way to open this album. A very long song, clocking it at 10 minutes and 28 seconds. Birth and Death of the Pillars of Creation. And I feel like this track is, like I said, a very strong opener because it has this really eerie opening. It's very simple, guitar playing, guitar little thing here to kind of open up this album. But it's very catchy and very eerie, and it makes you just want to go, okay, what's exactly going to happen next? And all of a sudden, bam, the rest of the band slams in with this heavy, mighty, heavy and mighty riff is what I was trying to say. And I feel like that that was a very powerful thing to really just throw it in and just like to kind of like scare you for a second because you don't know what's going to happen because it comes out of basically nowhere. And I feel like that track is a very powerful one. It's not fast paced and not very aggressive. It's a very pulled back track, but it does have a lot of very epic and mighty things. It's a very monumental track in my personal opinion because it is has it has so many things going for it that I keep listening to it and like I said, like I was saying earlier about rehearing things and rediscovering things and discovering new things. Um, it's happening within this track because there's so many small things going on in the background as you're listening to something in the forefront, like the vocals or the guitar playing, that you'll hear something that you previously didn't hear before. So I think it's a great track to open this album to really pull the listener in, to really get ready for what this album is going to be delivering to you, the listener. So I have to give that props because that was a like I said, a great track to really open up this album that has so many things going for it. Track number two and track number six and track number nine track number nine are the three acoustic songs that were written by someone outside of the band in those tracks. I don't, I don't want to try to pronounce them because I'll probably butcher them, but check them out in the track listing. Uh, track number two, repeat again. Track number six and track number nine, check those songs out especially because they're a little bit different, but they do fit right along with the idea and the mindset and the world of Agalock. So they do fit. It's not like something completely outside of the realm. It does fit, but it, it was something that to really switch up the actual songs and switch up this album to kind of, you know, give a little bit of a different vibe. It's the acoustic guitar playing is definitely worth listening to. The Astral Dialogue, track number three. Dark Matter Gods, track number four. Uh, track number five, Celestial Effigy. I probably butchered that, but you know, trying to give it out there. Veils Beyond Dimension, track number seven. Track number eight, uh, track number eight, Plateau, Plateau of the Ages. I hope I got that right too, That which clocks in at 12 minutes and 26 seconds. So basically all the songs, because what I'm trying to say is that all the songs have a purpose on this album, whether it's the acoustic, you know, guitar songs, the very short ones that just kind of switch up this album to the songs that were actually written by the band and have a very fast-paced aggressiveness or if it's the beautiful melodies or if it's just the actual aggressive or the aggression within the vocals itself because this album is just filled with all the things that you've come to know from Agaloc and they really like I've been saying expand on that sound they really push themselves to really find new ways to deliver what they're trying to deliver to the audience and they're trying to deliver it maybe in a different way or a different style or a different format so i think that they accomplish that in the fact that they are really pushing for these new ideas and pushing to expand the whole idea of agalock because if they didn't then you'd get to the point where you're going okay so when exactly are they going to do something different because each album sounds the same but for me there is that case, yes, some people may say, and they have said, yes, okay, well, this album sounds exactly like the last album. If you look more in depth into the music, you'll know that that's not the case. But to some, I understand, and I respect that if you say that. But for The Serpent in the Sphere, I do sometimes get the vibe. It sounds kind of familiar to something on a previous record. But then they do something right after that, or something that happens before that, that is something that it's a new take on that idea. It's a new concept. It's something they're trying to do. So I got to give them props for that. Let's go to the sound of the band and then we'll end this review and we'll be done. So I'm going to try my best not to butcher these guys' names, but it's probably going to happen. But uh, bear with me here. John on guitars, acoustic guitars, vocals, whispers, and percussion. Now, I feel like for his vocals, let's talk about his vocals, then we'll talk about guitars, bass, and drums in that order as we always do. His harsh vocals, his you know screeching vocals and stuff like that, the black metal type vocals people call, are very menacing and very scary and what you'd expect from Agaloc because it's on the past releases, so there's no change there. Um, I felt like his vocals 
are very good in that aspect. There are some singing vocals that he does as well, which I feel like are great as well. They are a nice addition. Uh, I feel like that he's doing a great job here. The lyrical content is a little bit different than what you've, you've heard from uh, past experiences from Agaloc, but at the same time, the lyrical content has always been powerful, whether it's about this subject or it's this subject. It's always a very, very powerful thing within it, within Agaloc's uh, albums and EPs. So it's a very powerful thing once again on this album. So got to give props to the vocal work. He did a great job and lyrical content, the same thing as well. Lyrics from Agaloc are always uh, very interesting to listen to. And once again, this is no exception. It's, it's great nonetheless. Uh, the guitar playing now... Guitar playing that also includes Don on guitars, piano, and keyboards. We'll get to piano and keyboards in a little bit. But the guitar playing, the actual rhythm playing, and the lead playing. The rhythm playing, I feel like, is very, very powerful. It is definitely a mighty force within Agaloc. It, it really does pull the songs forward. It really does pull me in as a guitar lover, so i got to give that props. The acoustic guitars, along with the uh, along with uh, Nathaniel, probably butcher that again. He is the guy who... Did the three acoustic uh, songs that are, you know, he's outside of the band. But the gu acoustic guitars in general, including him and, of course, uh, John and Don. The, gu the acoustic guitar playing is just phenomenal. Once again, it really does add another element besides just clean guitar tone, which is also great. The clean guitar playing is just phenomenal again. But the acoustic guitars really does add this more the peaceful vibe along with the clean guitar tone uh, vibe, clean guitar parts, but the acoustic guitars are definitely needed because it really does enhance these songs, so they sound great nonetheless. With the piano and keyboard bit from Don, the piano and keyboard bits are need uh, are used a used in a good way. They're not used to kind of just throw into the mix, is what I was trying to say. They're not tr throwing it in just to throw it in. It's putting in. It's they're putting into the sections and the songs because they are needed, and it really does enhance the songs. It's not thrown in just to be thrown in. So that was a good thing there. The bass playing from Jason, I feel like, is top notch once again. The bass, I love hearing it. It really does enhance these songs, and he's not just playing just to you know play a note. He's actually helping out with the band and helping progress the songs in the in the directions they are needing them to go. And so I feel like he's doing great for what he's doing there. Now I'm probably going to screw that up, so I'm going to spell his name out. A E S O P on drums. I'm not even going to try to announce it. You can hate all you want, but I'm not going to try to butcher a name. The drumming, once again, is something that I always like to hear from uh, Agaloc because it really is powerful in a sense. It really does enhance these songs, in my personal opinion. Um, I feel like the drumming could be a little bit louder in the mix in some cases. I've noticed that, that some of the drumming, maybe it's. I don't maybe the recording. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like that his playing overall was great, and he really does help out on these songs. Overall, I think this, the band sounds great. The band sounds exactly like you want to hear from Agalox, so there's no change there. That the band sounds great. The the album sounds great, and so what else you can say? They sound great. So overall, the Serpent and the Sphere is another Agalox album that you'll either love, you'll hate, or you'll like. Um, for me, I love the album, and I feel like that it is a very powerful album. It really does deliver a lot of interesting messages. It really does have a lot going for it that I really attach myself to and to enjoy. So I got to give them that prop. So the two questions remaining as I'll end this review is that what's my rating? I feel like the rating for this album is in. It's either a 9.5 or a 9.75. It may be a 10 one day, but I'm not sure. But it's in between those two. And uh, is it contender of album of the year? And uh, maybe it is. I don't know. But as of right now, it's an amazing album. Go check it out if you haven't. Anyways, guys, that's the review. I'm Chainsaw. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to end this video now. If you like the video, like the video. If you want to see more, me more, <laughs> click my name or subscribe to see more. Thank you guys for watching. See ya.